Corey. Welcome to Food and Flourish in studio. Today we are talking with Todd Ellenwood, who is with Cruz Tequila. Uh, we actually had Todd in here not too long ago for the Phoenix Tequila Fest and found out there's some very interesting information regarding tequila. It's actually an art. There's a way to, to drink it and to go about the whole tequila manner. So um, he is a catador, which is actually a tequila expert here in Arizona. And thank you for being here today. Our pleasure, thank you. So I see that you have some glasses here. So let's kind of go into a little bit about how do you drink tequila? <laughs> I mean, I thought you just grabbed a glass, put it in there, and then the, the lime and the salt. And There's so much <laughs> to know about tequila. And we were, we were talking earlier. And when it comes to spirits as a whole, mm -hmm. there's all these different kinds of spirits. Rums, vodkas, tequilas, whiskeys. And most people think something like a cognac is very complex. You've got those the specific glasses made for it. There's about 60 different aromatic components to cognac, which is actually a lot. Right. But then when you look at tequila, there's about 200 different aromatics, oh which is so very complex. It's overwhelming. And when you look at the tasting portion of it, that's why there's so many different types, brands of tequila, mm -hmm. because every little piece that you, you do in the process, the growing process, the aging process, every single step of the way is gonna have a little impact on that flavor profile. So that's why when you taste tequila, you can taste all sorts of things, all the way from, from cocoa right. to cinnamon, pineapple, orange blossom, all these crazy things. But it's so cool because you never think of that. When, when, again, what you said, you think of salt and lime right. and, and wolfing it down or whatever it is. But especially as we, we talk about Cruz tequila, mm -hmm. this is actually different. It's lighter, softer, a little bit sweeter. Mm -hmm. And we're actually an estate grown company. So what that means is that our agave that we've got is from our own fields. So we don't just buy by the tonnage. Right. So when you look at that, you've got the best agave that we can get, we take, and then the agave that maybe isn't as high sugar content, we basically sell off right. to other companies. So that's one of the steps that Cruz Tequila uses to become this different flavor. And, and as we get into the tasting portion, you can taste the difference. You can smell the difference. You can see the difference. It's, it's like wine kind of. It is. Like it there's really a whole is. art to wine, you know, the oaky flavors. I mean, there's so many different fruity essences in a wine oh, that yeah. you can actually pick these up in a tequila as well. Yep, yep, definitely. Okay, all right. Well, then uh, just to touch real quick, you have two kinds of tequilas that you make. We do. So as you see here, we've got the Cruz Silver and the Cruz mm -hmm. Reposado. Mm -hmm. The Cruz Silver is actually clear. Okay. So if you see that, it's like because, the Blanco. Exactly. Right, Blanco, okay. Plata, Platinum. Okay. This is our silver. Okay. So it's clear because it has not been aged, actually. And you can age a Blanco or a Silver up to about two months. Most people don't. If you do, once you hit that two month mark, it's then called Reposado, which is what we have here. Okay. So Cruz Reposado has been aged right around six months in American Oak whiskey barrels. Now by doing that, we've chosen those specific barrels because you're gonna get this just beautiful, rich caramel to it, a little bit of toasted vanilla. You'll smell it and taste it. From the barrels. From the barrels. Wow. From the barrels. And you get some beautiful complexities and we didn't just create this tequila. It actually took us 36 different batches to perfect this tequila. Took three years of it's research. It's a lot of practice. A lot of practice. <laughs> but at the end of the day... It's a lot of nights of tequila. But it's a better product <laughs> at the end of the day, which is what we're all here for. Right, yeah. And you said before, which I thought was interesting, is you actually used to not be a huge fan of tequila. That's true. That's true. Which is kind of ironic because now... You because we're, we're here as, as uh, tequila experts, if you will. <laughs> but it's true. It's true. I didn't like tequila because I had this perception of what tequila should taste like. Right. Again, the salt, the lime. But it's, it's a different experience. And after we started creating those 36 different batches, mm -hmm. it became better and better and better. And we really perfected what we thought to be a lighter, softer, sweeter, more, more creamy style tequila, okay. which there really isn't anything out there. Because again, I had this perception of this spicy, that pepper, that burn, right. and that's what I don't like. Mm -hmm. And then when we started creating this, and you've got that lighter flavor profile, it's so different that it takes you by surprise, and people taste it, and they go, wow. You ever see people, they, they go to taste tequila, and they sometimes they'll shoot it back, and they'll go, mm. You know, oh. <laughs> Isn't that what the lime and the salt's for? Exactly. <laughs> we, we call that in the industry as the tequila face. It's this squinty and <laughs> kind of bitter. You know what I'm talking yeah. about. And with this, you don't get it because it doesn't have that bitterness. Okay. It doesn't have that fiery alcohol type of flavor. It really is sweet, soft, and light. So the idea of having lime and salt, is that, you know, so tequila is not necessarily meant to have those with it. It's meant to be enjoyed as a single spirit yes. alone. Is that right? Well. People ask me, what's the best way to taste tequila? Mm -hmm. And there is a specific way to taste tequila, but depending on how you like to, mm -hmm. to sip your tequila, whether you sip it, whether you shoot it, whether you have it out of the freezer, cold, hot, 
however you like to enjoy it, that's how we recommend to drink it. Mm -hmm. But the salt and lime was created just a while back to kind of cover up those flavors, the flavors that were not ideal. But now as we start to progress, and especially cruise tequila, you have a tequila like this, you don't need the salt, you don't need okay. the lime. You pick up those flavors. All yeah, right, well, exactly. let's kind of go through the art of tequila. So serving it, how you go about, you know, um, tasting it, pouring it. What do we need to know? Well, let's start with the silver first. Okay. So what we're going to do, we've got these glasses here. Now, this is a specific tequila glass, and if you look, it is specific. So it looks almost like a, like a champagne. It is. It's almost like a champagne flute. They actually make glasses for tequila. This is a tequila glass from Riedel, actually. Wow. Made out of crystal, I believe. But the specifics to this glass is that it's actually straight up, mm -hmm. and it bowls, yeah. it bowls the tequila at the bottom, so you've got a lot of surface area. Okay. But you'll see some cognac glasses where they have that. The big. They're big, uh -huh. and then they flute in. Right. What that's doing is that's pushing a lot of those aromatics into a fine point, mm -hmm. and that's it's going to be too much for tequila. And so that's why you want it to be a straight glass so that those... Can those, kind of breathe a little the bit. The aromatics, yeah, it'll go out, and so when you actually taste it and you smell it, the aromatics are actually being delivered to certain parts of your tongue. I don't know how they figure that out, but interesting. it's really interesting. Yeah. So your tongue and your nose will smell all these different things. And the way that this glass is shaped is actually gonna deliver those different pieces. And we'll get into that in just a moment. Okay, sure. As we start with this silver, <laughs> so the first thing we're gonna do is just we're gonna look at it. That's about the ideal amount right there. Any okay. more and it'll change the aromatics of it. Start with the silver. So again, cruise silver has not been aged whatsoever. We're going to look at it first, and if you look at it in the light, it's just a brilliant, like shiny, yeah, <laughs> brilliant, shiny, you can see it's it's perfectly clear, mm -hmm. it doesn't have any black floaties or anything like that. So you can tell... I don't like black floaties. Exactly. Like. You can tell because it's not cloudy that it doesn't have, that we've perfected our filtration process. Okay. And other pieces of the, the process that we do, is our distillation, things like that, is, is very high in quality. Mm -hmm. You can tell that a little bit from the, the, the site. Okay. Now, if you take and you put it like this, what you're looking at there is you're actually looking at the aurora of it. So okay. it's hard to tell unless you've got just a pure white background, but around yeah, the edge... Yeah, we're with black here, so... <laughs> around the edge, you're going to see just a slight difference of color. So you see that the main body of the tequila with this one is completely clear. Mm -hmm. And the edge is right around it. There's a very small amount. It's almost like a millimeter all the way around. Right. It's a brilliant shiny, almost like a silver. Mm -hmm. and that's the aurora. You can tell somewhat about the density of it and, some, and more about the mineral composition of it through that. So the more vibrant that is, the more mineral composition. Okay. So we can tell by that is Cruz Tequila has, the agave for us has been grown in the Los Altos region of Jalisco. And the agave that grows there has much higher sugar content, much higher in minerals because the soil up there is actually, it's more volcanic versus sandy, which is the lower region. Okay. So you get more iron and some more minerals. And so that's arguably some of the finest agave it comes from that region. Mm -hmm. So that's a little bit more difficult. Let's, let's so go to the fun part. So tequila is good for you. Well, <laughs> I can't say that. Let's go to the fun part. So what we're going to do is we're going to take it and we're going to swirl it like that. Are you supposed to hold it like that? No, you can. Does it matter? Is there any rule to that? No. I'm just I asking. guess you could say if you hold it here, you may warm it up. Okay. But well, we don't want to. It doesn't really, it doesn't really matter. Okay. As you swirl here, what you're doing is you're going to look at the body of the tequila. So you see how it sticks up there and it's slowly coming down. Oh, see right. See how it's falling down? Mm -hmm. Just like wine, you look at the legs. Mm -hmm. Tequila in Mexico has a minimum of 35% alcohol up to, I believe, 55% alcohol. Mm -hmm. Now, in, in the United States, the minimum is actually 40% alcohol. Oh, okay. And you can go all the way up to, you see 50, and you wow. see other things. So what, what you're seeing here is you're seeing a 40% alcohol tequila just based on that volume. Mm -hmm. So if you buy a tequila, let's say that's 35% alcohol, it's going to run a lot quicker. It's going to be a lot less oily, mm -hmm. and you can see that just from the body. So you can tell that the proof is higher, why it's slower. It yes, appears. exactly. Okay. And a little bit of that is from the aging process once we get into the reposados and the añejos and things like that. Okay. But you can tell a lot by the alcohol. So this obviously this. would be faster than the reposado. Well, te technically, it should be right around the same because oh, okay. it's the same alcohol percentage, oh. but it, it'll drop different. Okay. It'll drop different. Even though it's the same speed, mm -hmm. it'll just look slightly different because okay. it's, it's got a little bit more body to it. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to have the first smell. smell. The first smell with tequila. It's like wine, you just get right in there? No, no, you don't want to get tequila. Take your nose actually. right in there. <laughs> There's actually three different smells we're going to do here. Okay. So the first smell, you're going to smell whether it's this cooked agave type flavor or raw agave type flavor. Okay. And you're going to smell it. And you're going to smell from right about here. 
Now, do I want my nose like closer down or higher? To it can be right about in the middle. Okay. So you're smelling whether it's either cooked agave or raw agave. And what I mean by that is cooked agave is going to smell a lot like vanilla, okay. yams, pumpkin. Raw agave is going to smell a lot like fresh cut grass, if you will, mm -hmm. a little bit more herbal. So you can see with us, this has got a nice cooked agave flavor. If you've mm -hmm. ever tasted or smelled agave nectar, mm -hmm. that's what cooked agave tastes like okay. and smells like. Okay. So if you smell that, you can tell with us, with Cruz Tequila, we use traditional hornos, which is a slow cooking method. The other process is what's called an autoclave, and that is basically a pressure cooker. We use the slower cooking process, mm -hmm. which actually caramelizes the agave. Okay. You get uh, somewhat of a, a sweeter, more complex flavor profile, and it creates something just you can taste and smell so many different complexities from it. You can smell that just from that first smell, whether it's hornos or autoclaves. So now, this is what's very interesting. Because of this glass, it's going to deliver three different types of smells. Okay. Are you ready for this? I'm ready. So there's the bottom, <laughs> okay. the middle, and the top. So you're going to put your nose, <laughs> if you can see, not in it so much, okay. but just right at the edge. So let's smell the bottom. And what's happening when you smell the bottom versus the top and mm -hmm. the middle, the tequila is actually closer to your nose. Right. So you're going to smell a little bit more of that just tiny bit of re residual alcohol smell. And as you go up to the top, you're going to smell a little bit more complexities as you go all the way through. So if you smell the bottom, it doesn't smell a lot like alcohol because Cruz Tequila mm -hmm. is light in that alcohol flavor. But, but I do get different different smells. Just a little bit the on bottom the bottom. To the top. Mm -hmm. And as you go to the top, it's more citrus, mm -hmm. vanilla, things like that. And it's crazy because so you, you can't really pick that up on the bottom, but you no. can pick it up on the top. Uh -huh. and it's lighter. That's, that's why this glass works perfectly for something like that. So you wouldn't pick these up in a different kind of glass, or maybe it just wouldn't be you as may. obvious. Oh, it would okay. just be difficult. Okay. It'd be difficult. The standard person, just like all of us that are that are smelling. Uh, that look for aromatics can sense about a thousand different components of aromatics. Mm -hmm. Someone who's trained in smells can smell 10,000 or more. Oh my god. So for for all of us, it's just <laughs> easier to have a glass like this. Right, yeah. Exactly. So can you smell the differences? They definitely smell different, that's mm -hmm. for sure. Yeah. Are you ready to taste? I am. So is there any anything I need to know before I taste this, or we just... Yeah. It's a special <laughs> way of tasting. <laughs> just... No, I'm kidding. I'm and again, as, as far as the tasting portion, we uh -huh. really try to enjoy and, and distinct the different types of flavors and smells and aromatics. This is the way that we like to do it. Once you, you get it, you know Cruz, you know whichever tequila you like, drink it however you like, whether it's sipping in a rocks glass or sipping in a or shooting or what, however you like to do it, that's fine. But as far as the different characteristics that you can smell and taste, mm -hmm. this, this is, is the, the ideal way to do it. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to put just a tiny bit on our tongue. Okay. We're going to put it right in the center of the tongue. And your taste buds can taste all these different things, bitter, sweet, salty, acidity. Right. And also it can experience astringency. As far as silver, as far as tequila goes as a whole, mm -hmm. you're only going to be able to taste two different things. And that's bitterness and sweetness. Bitter and sweet. Mm -hmm. Bitter and sweet. Sweet on the tip, bitter right on the back, and a little bit on the sides. Okay. So you're okay. going to put it right in the center. I'm going to put it just a little bit around. I wouldn't say swirl it and kind of... Don't like, swish. Don't swish. <laughs> but just a little bit. Let it roll around the tongue a little bit. Okay. Swallow and just breathe out. All right. Are you ready? I'm ready. Salute. Breathe in with the mouth, out with the nose. Whoa! A lot of flavor. Woo! <laughs> a lot of flavor. Especially if it's your first tequila smooth. of the day. <laughs> yeah, exactly. First tequila of the day. Exactly. But, but normally it, it burns a little mm -hmm. more. I mean, it, you can still feel that, but it's it's more of a smooth yes. you know, transition. It's not so... Oh my gosh. Exactly. It, it is. And, and what we've wow. been able to do is take a lot of that spice and that bitterness mm -hmm. out completely mm -hmm. and make a nice long finish in the back end which is very desirable as far as uh, spirits go and tequilas right. as well so now you've smelt it you've seen it you've tasted it everything and you can you can, you can you can't really hear it it, it, it sounds great it, it sounds lovely <laughs> but, but that's really how you experience tequila right now as far as the reposado goes it's the same process that we just did there with the the sight mm -hmm. the taste the smell but when you smell it, specifically with reposados and añejos, mm -hmm. you're going to smell different complexities of the barrel process. Okay. So you're going to smell things from cinnamon, maple, soy sauce, believe it or not, chocolate, <laughs> all these toasted vanilla, all these different complexities. There's a whole bunch when it comes to barrels. It's like a personality test. It what is. What do you smell? It, what do you smell? <laughs> but 
you, you're going to smell something that's different from what I'm going to smell. Right. Just because you've had different experiences, backgrounds, whatever it may mm. be. But as far as our reposado goes, the main distinct aromatics that you're going to get from our reposado, you're going to get caramels, rich, rich caramel, and it almost smells like sweet caramel. Mm -hmm. Toasty vanilla and a little bit of oak because we've aged ours in American oak whiskey barrels for about six months. Six months, okay. Yeah. Wow. Incredible, right? There's so much to it I didn't know. <laughs> well, I'm so glad because actually last time you were here, you brought these these glasses and mm -hmm. I went, what? we're not doing wine. And you said, no, I know that. We're drinking tequila. Exactly. So I really appreciate you taking the time to come in and show us that it's not about putting it in a shot glass, getting your lime and your salt, and then chugging it. You know, there's there's an enjoyment here and there's a whole personality and mm -hmm. of going through the motions of, of you know, really getting to know your tequila. Yep. So I really do appreciate you coming by and taking the time to do that for us. It is our pleasure. Thank you.